So then, with the appearance of the first almost working Russian weapon in the Battlefield 5 files, things seem to be pointing in an eastern direction when it comes to the next major theatre of war coming to this game. That means Russian or Soviet weaponry and some truly iconic additions. I've pulled together several weapons that I think would be likely additions to Battlefield 5 with an Eastern Front expansion, with some more and slightly less obvious options, but overall I think that this would be the main bulk of the weaponry launching with the Eastern Front. Now just before we jump in today, I want to say another massive big thank you for helping me reach half a million subscribers last week. It's a massive milestone for the channel and it's been a fairly long time coming. 2019 was a difficult year for this channel, but 2020 seems to be going much better, which is awesome. If you are still a regular watcher of this channel and you aren't subscribed, then please do consider clicking that subscribe button. Still around 60% of the views that this channel gets come from non-subscribed people. So if you do watch regularly, then please click that subscribe button. The next target is 1 million subscribers. Okay then, let's kick off this list with perhaps the most iconic and well-known Soviet weapon from World War II specifically, and potentially even of all time, the Mosin Nagant Rifle. The M1891 30-bolt action rifle, that was the standard issue weapon to Soviet troops during World War II, and millions of these rifles were produced during the war period. But as you can tell from the name, the weapon predates even the First World War. And you might remember, if you played Battlefield 1, the Mosin Nagant rifle was part of the Russian expansion for that game. The Mosin Nagant features a 5 round internal magazine and it's chambered for the 7.62x54mm cartridge, and that's common across quite a few of these Russian weapons that we'll talk about today. Now in Battlefield 5, I wholly expect that DICE will introduce this bolt action rifle as the recon option for the Russian faction, and perhaps they might also introduce the carbine variant as well, the M1938 as a bolt action carbine for the medic class. The introduction of the jungle carbine with the Pacific expansion, that has led to a lot more long range medic gameplay, and the jungle carbine is very effective in close to mid range environments, so having a Russian equivalent of that would be really awesome for the next theatre of war. Next up on my list is a frankly less well known weapon than the Mosin Nagant, but if you played Battlefield 1 then you should be familiar with this thing. This is the Fedorov Avtoma, and it was a battle rifle that was produced well before the beginning of the Second World War, and even during World War I, it only saw very limited use when the Russian Empire collapsed in 1917. The production of the weapon was then halted until later in the 1920s, when the Red Army deemed it adequate for its use. However, once a ban was introduced on weapons using foreign ammunition, it was shelved for good at least until the Winter War during World War II against Finland when that began in late 1939. Here, several units of the Fedorov were documented as in use by troops on the Karelian Front. And this, I think, would be a perfect candidate for a Soviet assault weapon, a fully automatic rifle that could compete with some of the well-established rifles in the class already, like the SGG-44, the Sturmgewehr, and the Ribeyrols. Next up on my list, we have a semi-automatic rifle here, the Tokarev SVT-40. This weapon was the most widely used semi-automatic weapon by the Soviet Union during World War II, and it was actually set to become the new standard issue rifle of the Red Army, but with the German invasion occurring in 1941 and changing the entire course of the war for the Soviets, it was favoured to go back towards the Mosin Nagant bolt action as the standard issue rifle. Nearly 2 million of the Tokarev SVT-40s were actually produced during the Second World War, which was a little bit below the real target of over 2 million, but it was actually considered fairly advanced Soviet technology at the time. The weapon was designed to be as light as possible. It also featured a bayonet attachment, a detachable 10 round box magazine that could also be loaded via a top mounted receiver, and it had a muzzle brake fitted to the end of the barrel. Now in Battlefield 5, this is a weapon that, because of its larger magazine, I could see becoming an assault semi-automatic rifle, but there is also scope for it to sit in the recon class, perhaps 
as a semi-automatic sniper rifle, maybe with some higher powered optic options. Okay then, shifting gears now, we're going to take a look at submachine guns and talk about a little bit more close quarters action. And I think we all know what I'm about to suggest here, the PPSH-41. This truly iconic Soviet weapons origins can actually be traced back to another weapon that's already available in Battlefield 5, the Suomi SMG. The Suomi is a Finnish weapon, and it was the base for Soviet work that ended up becoming the PPD-34, which was a primitive submachine gun. That was eventually improved upon, with that being designated the PPD-40, and then the PPSH-41 was created as a much cheaper alternative to the PPD-40. Around 7 million units of the PPSH-41 were produced from 1941 all the way through to 1947, and the weapon saw action in several wars after World War II as well. Its most compounding feature was the 71 round drum magazine and that would allow soldiers to engage in close quarters combat fighting and it would limit the amount of times that they would need to reload. It could also be fitted with a smaller 35 round stick magazine that was introduced in 1942 because of issues with misfeeding from those 71 round drum magazines. Now of course in Battlefield 5 this would slot right into the medic class and it would be competing with those high rate of fire weapons like the Suomi, the Type 2A, the Tommy Gun and the Type 100. When it comes to machine guns, we saw the other day that DICE has been working to improve the LAD or the LAD light machine gun, an experimental prototype World War II machine gun that was made by the Soviets. But I also think it's conceivable that we would see the DP-27 as well. Designed in the late 1920s by the Soviet Red Army, the weapon was reliable and it was cheap to produce in really large numbers. And tests actually revealed that one of these DP-27 machine guns fired over 40,000 rounds in adverse weather conditions and it only suffered 0.6% stoppages, which is pretty good for a World War II weapon. It was also using the same 7.62mm rounds as the Mosin Nagant rifle, and that made sure that ammunition could be shared amongst soldiers during the battle. A 47 round top mounted PAN magazine gave this weapon its nickname, the Record Player. The PAN rotated whilst it was being fired. This again quite obviously would fit right into the support class in Battlefield 5 and considering its relatively small magazine capacity compared to some of the other machine guns out there, I expect that this would take on the form of a light machine gun and that would give players the option to aim down sights with it. And actually I think it could become a direct competitor to the Lewis gun, at least in terms of looks anyway because they do look quite similar. And then something a little bit different is next on my list, perhaps something special. Battlefield 5 has introduced anti-material rifles as options for the recon class and whilst I don't actually like the way that they're balanced or implemented whatsoever, I actually think they'd be way more fun and interesting if they were battle pickup weapons, like the Tank Gavir weapon from Battlefield 1, that thing did a lot more damage but had way less ammunition. I think there's still scope to add a Soviet version of an anti-tank rifle here. The PTRS-41 is an anti-tank rifle with a 5 round internal magazine and it fired 14.5 by 114 millimeter rounds. The weapon was devastatingly powerful when it was first introduced. It could penetrate 40 millimeters of armor at up to a 100 meter distance and the rounds would fly at a 1000 meter per second muzzle velocity. Now with the current Battlefield 5 balancing, as I said, the PTRS would fit nicely into the anti-material rifle category within the recon class, but honestly, I'd actually like to see DICE scrap that entire category and implement the weapons as pickups. You could have the Boys AT and the Panzerbuchser being set on European maps as pickups, and then the PTRS being set up on the Eastern Front maps, with the Panzerbuchser being the German option, because most likely on the Eastern Front, we're going to see the Russians versus the Germans. That way, you could then crank up the damage that each round does to vehicles, but you could also reduce the ammunition, and it would make it a limited use power weapon. Come on, Dice, you know it makes sense. And then to finish off this list, we have a couple of secondary weapons. 
the M1895 Nagant revolver and the Tokarev TT-33 pistol. The revolver, that was the standard issue sidearm of the Russian Empire during World War I, and it carried that same role into World War II with the Red Army. And the Tokarev, that was due to replace the revolver, but it was never fully implemented properly, but it was widely distributed and mainly held by officers. Now, of all of these weapons, I fully expect the Mosin Nagant Long Rifle, the PPSH-41 SMG, the DP-27 Machine Gun, and the Tokarev SVT-40, and of course, the two sidearms, I fully expect those to be part of some kind of Battlefield 5 Eastern Front expansion. As for the Fedorov Avtomat and the PTRS-41, I'm not quite sure. The Fedorov might be included because DICE might be able to use their weapon model from Battlefield 1. That would be a good recycling of assets and it would be a good fully automatic assault weapon for Battlefield 5. And the PTRS? I'm just not sure we need another anti-tank weapon in the game. The way that DICE has balanced those weapons, it just promotes this really static and frankly boring playstyle. So adding a third into the game might not be the way to go, but if DICE did go ahead and do the work to convert those anti-tank rifles into pickup weapons and make them way more attractive to use, then yes, I'd say go and add that thing straight into the game. But there you are, nine weapons that DICE could add to the Battlefield 5 Eastern Front expansion. Leave me your thoughts and comments down below. Maybe leave some comments about weapons that you'd like to see in a Russian expansion, any that I've missed off my list. And then I might do a video next week if there's enough suggestions of sort of like a community highlights for weapons that could be added into a Russian expansion. Because I'm sure there are plenty of others out there that didn't come anywhere near my list. Leave me a rating on this video as well, it is much appreciated, and I'll catch you all in the next one.